Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. Today I'm coming to you from the exotic location of my backyard. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to dye fabric using walnut hulls. First of all, I'm gonna tell you why I'm shooting from my backyard. There's a few different reasons. One of which, I happen to have three fantastic walnut trees, black walnut trees that grows on my property here in town. And where I usually go camping, there's all kinds of nut trees, but <laughs> I don't know of a single black walnut tree that's anywhere near where I normally camp. The other thing is it requires a pretty decent size uh, galvanized tub in order to boil that uh, walnut hull up and to be able to have a large enough vessel to be able to dye the clothing that I'm gonna put into it. And really the most important reason is my wife and I are getting our three youngest grand monkeys, AKA grandchildren uh, this weekend. And we're gonna do all kinds of fall activities with them. We're gonna do uh, fall decorations. We're gonna carve pumpkins. We're gonna have hot spice cider on the fire. We're gonna do all kinds of awesome things with our grand monkeys uh, this weekend. So I wanted to stick close to home. So, I'm going to go ahead and warn everyone right now. You're going to hear all kinds of background sounds, non-forest background sounds. It may even be the screams of playing children, but the content's going to be here. And I'm going to do everything I can to educate you about walnut dyeing and all of the fantastic benefits to black walnuts, period. I know some of you might be wondering, what in the world is walnut hulls? And why in the world would I even want to attempt to dye anything with it? Well, that's probably a good question. A walnut hull is this softer, pulpy material that surrounds the black walnut shell. Now, this stuff is here for one purpose and one purpose only to rot and decompose around the walnut as the season allows it to sink down into the soil over the winter months. And in spring, this is soft enough to actually sprout a baby walnut tree. Now, this right now is easy to deal with. However, when you pick them up and decomposition has already started, they will smell bad, they will be filled with maggots, and it's just generally unpleasant to use. This material that surrounds the black walnut is actually what makes the dye. Historically speaking, black walnut hulls have been used for, it's, it's more of a stain than it is a true dye because there's, there's no actual pigments uh, in this like go into dyes. And this is on its own, not color fast like dyes are. It really truly is a stain that stains particular colors, primarily a very dark brown. And if I weren't wearing gloves and I would rub this surface of this black walnut hull, within probably 15 to 20 minutes, I'm gonna start noticing my fingertips are gonna turn very dark brown and they will stay that way for several days, if not into several weeks. This is the material that we're gonna be using as the dye. And like I said, historically speaking, um, these were used to dye fabric. They were used uh, as ink because this actually makes some pretty decent ink very dark brown ink if you like uh, doing calligraphy and you like that whole sapia color this would make some excellent sapia ink for you but if you boil it down to where it's good and thick it'll make a black ink as well now also 
this stuff was used to stain traps, metal traps. When you're out uh, trapping for fur, uh, for food, what have you, you would boil your steel traps in these. And it did two things, one of which it actually darkened up the metal. But the other thing, it conditioned the metal to be able to brown the metal. Browning is a type of a rust protectant. And, you know, it has a nice um, reddish brown color to it. And um, the oils that are in this, when you're boiling traps in them, um, will condition that metal so that it more readily browns the steel as opposed to allowing just flat out rust, rust to occur. That's a whole nother process and a whole nother video. But I'm going to be covering fabric dyeing with black walnut holes. Now when you're harvesting black walnuts, you just pick them up off the ground. But the one thing you want to check for is their state of decomposition. And I can use this exactly the way it is to dye with. Any of these I can. But what I want to do is I want to look for the walnut hulls that are still intact. And the reason being is I can, I can dye with these just the way they are. However, I can also remove the hulls and dry them out. And if the walnut is not decomposing, I have a lot of material that's going to dry and be usable years on down the road. So when I first moved in to this house uh, about six years ago, five, six years ago, I harvested <laughs> in one fall, it had to have been what was it, uh, 50 gallons, 10 five gallon buckets of these, and I dried every bit of them. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. And I'm still using those today. Now I'm going to do a combination. I'm gonna throw a few of these in as well as the uh, walnut hulls that I dried several years ago, just so you can see how the two work in exactly the same manner. However, these, these are gonna rot here pretty soon. And my dried walnut hulls, they're gonna be good for decades down the road. I'm gonna show you how I process black walnut hulls in order to dry them. And when I first discovered this idea, it was like earth shattering. It was, it was amazing information that I can actually dry them and use them years down the road instead of having to deal with all the decomposition, the maggots and everything else as I went through all the process of walnut dyeing the way I used to. However, the, one of the individuals that I saw harvesting the black walnut hulls was using it by using a hammer to pound on the, the hull in order to loosen it up to pull it away from the nut. Well, I figured that's a great idea. That's a fantastic idea. So the first time I tried it, the first whack of the hammer to the black walnut hull squirted black walnut hull juice in my eye. The first whack. And what happened is it burned worse than CS. It was 10 times worse than the pain of having riot control agent, AKA tear gas in my eyes when I was in the gas chamber in basic training. It was horrible. Even after flushing it for a couple days, it, the, the pain was just immense. And I was, going to be an instructor at the one of the I think it was like the the fourth uh, Pathfinder gathering and that weekend I went out there and my eye was all nasty and everything and my friend um, Dr. David de la Sierra was there so oh no that's 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 nasty so he <laughs> contacted the local uh, pharmacist and the local pharmacist whipped up a batch of ana uh, antibiotics for my eye and I went over uh, across town in the CVS wearing 18th century uh, clothing because I was doing an 18th century presentation to get that stuff. But it would have been an absolutely miserable uh, time at the event 
had uh, Dr. De La Sierra not done that for me. And uh, not to mention, I would have had to go in the emergency room <laughs> because it would have been so bad. So if you are planning on using that technique, make sure you have face and eye protection. And keep in mind, every single drop of that juice Wherever it splatters, if it splatters on your clothes, if it splatters on your skin, it's going to stain into a dark brown stain. So just keep that in mind. The way I'm going to show you how I harvest the black walnut hulls, you don't have to worry about that one iota. In order to process the walnut hulls the way I do it, you need a pair of work gloves, a pair of old work boots that you're not going to be wearing inside for a while, and some old cardboard to lay down on the concrete because walnuts will actually even stain concrete. It's that strong of a stain and dye. Let's put your walnut down. Get your nasty work boots. Pop it there. There we go. This is what it's gonna look like. And you simply pull all that pulpy portion off of the walnut. All the pulpy stuff, that will go on uh, a drying rack of uh, screen to dry, and it'll dry within a week, no problem. And then you can put the nut in uh, an old cabinet, something like that, to dry out over the winter and you'll be able to use 100% of all the fantastic things you can get out of the black walnut and the shell. Now I've gone ahead and collected a good few walnuts that I'm going to throw in with the dried stuff I have. The bad thing about using the, the walnut like this, you're just throwing it into a boiling bath of water, is that you're gonna get the dye out of it, but that's it. There's no other benefits whatsoever. However, when you remove the hull and you dry the hull, you can use the hull in a lot of different ways. And you can grind it up into a powder, you can keep it in its lump form, uh, you can use it as inks, you can use it for dyes, and you still have 100% of all the use of the walnut itself. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. But when you use them like this, that's it. You're gonna get the dye, 100% of everything else is useless at that point because if you try to dry out the walnuts after you've boiled them, um, they're no good. They're no good. You can dry them out and yeah, they'll be dry, but the nut inside, the meat of the nut, will be pretty much inedible. It'll be pretty nasty. Now. Like I said, many years ago, I put up 10 five gallon buckets of this stuff. One gallon bag represents five gallons of walnuts still you know, in the hull. And this is what it looks like. This right here. Five gallon bucket of black walnuts in the hole when stripped off and dried one gallon of product. This right here should be enough to dye uh, a good size uh, overgarment, shirt, something like that, and you use two of these, definitely shirt and pants would be enough to do this. You can do it in as little as like four to five gallons of water, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's better to be able to circulate that uh, material and fabric around inside the, the dye bath, you just get a, a much better, much more even dye that way. Well, my fire's burning down a little bit so I can put the dye bath on, 
I just wanted to show you what I'm going to be dying today. It's this. This is a brand new ACU military issue shirt. Without a doubt, the most ineffective camouflage the United States military has ever issued to their troops. I picked this up at my local heart, uh, surplus store for $10. Now, you might be thinking, why in the world would you purchase the most ineffective camouflage in the history of United States military camouflage uniforms? Well, because I'm going to make it more effective by walnut dyeing it. And the reason I'm going with this as opposed to something else is because they're cheap. They're plentiful, they're abundant. People are going to surplus stores looking for woodland camo because it's camouflage this stuff stays on the racks forever i have seen all kinds of people do acu dye jobs and almost all of them use an apple green way too bright if you want to and you can track down olive drab or uh, tans things like that and mix a mixture of those together to create a, a truly a natural uh, camouflage green or a subdued green you can do that but apple green is not it it's it's almost too bright it's it's as bad in green as this is in grays this particular shirt fits me perfect so i'm actually going to be able to use it i went there in hopes of maybe finding an old used uh, pair of pants or something that didn't even fit uh, just so I could have an example of an ACU garment to dye bath. However, I kind of know a little bit about this because not too long ago, I used to have a Facebook account. Yes, a Facebook account. But with the recent events in this world, uh, Facebook proved to me that they are anti-American, that they are anti-freedom of speech, and I wanted nothing to do with them. Now, when I was on Facebook, I belonged to a group called Southern Ohio Bushcrafters. And early on, years and years and years ago, I got into a kick where I was testing camouflage patterns. And one of the things I did is I borrowed someone that was in active service, I borrowed one of their AC uniforms and did photographic comparisons with all kinds of other camouflages. DPM, Marpat, um, Flectarn, Woodland, you name it. Throw in some multicam there. I happened to find some yard good material, ripstop, same material that the uniforms are made of, at Walmart of all places, so I bought a big section of it. I forget how many yards, but this is what it looked like. And then I decided I was going to try a walnut dye with it. Look at this. This is amazing in the fall woods. Now, we have ACU before walnut dye. This is the back of the fabric. Glowing! This is ACU after the walnut dye bath. And here's the back. Even the back is camouflage. This blends in beautifully. It's actually better than Coyote in uh, our fall woods and better than some camouflage patterns. It's better than olive drab, that's for sure. Olive drab's a little dark. This is the perfect middle ground color, perfectly subdued for my neck of the woods. So this into this. And we're gonna see how well all the other facets of the ACU uniform top 
goes with this because there's Velcro on it, there are plastic buttons, there is plastic zippers, there's a lot of other things on there, probably including the synthetic nylon thread that we're going to see how well those stand out against the walnut dye staining. I'm going to be using a 17 gallon galvanized steel wash tub to do my dye bath in. Before I put it on the fire, I'm going to put about three gallons of water in it. So therefore, when I put it on the fire, the uh, heat's going to immediately transfer to the water and not do any harm whatsoever to the solder that's on the wash tub because I want to keep that water tight. I don't want any of that solder to melt out. Once I have it on the fire, I'm going to be putting more water in it. I'm going to be putting the walnuts and the dried walnut hulls that I've made several years ago and the ACU top inside of that. And I'm going to gradually let it heat up to a boil. You can already see the water darkening up from the dried walnut holes that I have in there. I'm going to put about another five gallons of water in here just to facilitate a lot of space for that fabric to open up and be able to get 100% of the dye and I'll bring you back. The dye bath has come to a boil and I'm going to allow that, it has just come to a boil, I'm going to let that sit for about 10-15 minutes and allow the fire to die down a little bit and let it steep for, you know, probably about an hour, hour and a half and uh, then I will actually remove the galvanized tub from the fire, set it off to the side overnight to let that dye really soak in. Now, the humble black walnut, as we know, we can make dye out of it, we can make ink, we can use it to uh, stain uh, steel traps. You could even use this to stain wood furniture if you wanted to. But every single part of this black walnut has tremendous numbers of uses. If we're just looking at the hull alone, it has all kinds of health benefits. It has to be processed, maybe added to a few other ingredients to make tinctures, syrups, and things like that. And all of which I'm certain is going to involve some degree of drying the hull, pulverizing it into a powder, and adding it to whatever. But it improves digestion. It's a good source of beta carotene and full of omega-3 fatty acids and flavonoids. It's packed with vitamins A, B, and C. It's a powerful antioxidant. It can also be used as a laxative. It can be used to treat snake and spider bites. It's an antipathogen and antiparasitic. It can even be used to treat your livestock and chickens to get them free of worms. And then when we discard everything about the hulls, the nutshell itself is used in sandblasting, it's used in filtration systems, 
It's used in cosmetics and within the oil drilling industry for who knows what all. And it's also used in pet litter. Now let's get to the meat of the matter. Let's talk about the nut that's inside the shell that's inside the hull. It's a powerful antioxidant, just like the hull is. It's very good for cat uh, cardiovascular health, and it's a fantastic source of unsaturated fat. It can be used as a fantastic remedy or treatment for high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, colon and prostate cancer, intestinal worms, and yeast infections. Not to mention, black walnuts just taste fantastic. One of my favorite breakfast dishes I have ever had was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee at the Log Cabin Pancake Shop and they had black walnut pancakes. Buckwheat pancakes with black walnuts crumbled up in the batter. Then they have a black walnut syrup with tons of black walnuts all in it smother all over it and it's absolutely fantastic when you pair it with country ham just wanted you to see the darkness of this uniform shirt thus far and it's nowhere close to being finished with the soaking stage as this sits overnight and cools down, it's going to even get darker. But wait folks, there's more. When this is finished with the whole process and it cools down tomorrow morning and I take the shirt out of this dye bath, I can still use that dye that walnut infused water as a dye in the future. You can get almost all the, the remains out of it, as much as you can, strain it out the best you can, and continue to boil this down till you've got a small amount of that liquid left. You can bottle that and use that as a concentrated dye and add more liquid to it to dye other things in the future. So even though all of the, 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 the solid stuff is going to be going into the compost pile, all the liquid can still be used as potential dye in the future. Good morning, folks. The dye bath is set with the shirt in it all night long. It's about 9 o'clock in the morning and I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, rinse it off, and let it dry. Look how black everything is. There we go. It's like tar. Ah, glorious. Glorious. Now for this bit, you definitely want to wear rubber gloves. Because even though everything's been boiled up and everything is set overnight, that stuff will still stain your skin and anything else very easily. And all the Velcro sticking together. And be careful with that. Don't want to ruin my clothes. As you can tell, before the rinse, this is very, very dark. And once it is rinsed, a lot of that severe, extreme darkness is going to rinse out and it's going to have a much more even uh, tone. And you'll pick up the subtleties of that digital pattern and the oldest variations of that good neutral brown. Well, I finished the first rinse, and as you can see, it is much lighter than what it was, 
this is going to lighten up more as it dries but it should have that good neutral brown uh, color when it's completely dry I was surprised to see how well the velcro actually stained on this and that's all the way around uh, the stitching you know it's nylon stitching I don't see that really standing out and if I don't see it standing out right now with the darkness of the fabric right now I don't think that's going to be an issue at all and like I said I can strain this out and keep this dye for a good while but you have to keep in mind this is an organic material and it will ferment so I would recommend if you're going to be uh, saving this you're going to render it down and save it I would recommend giving it a water bath just like you do when you're canning vegetables and that should be sufficient to be able to uh, seal that up to where it's going to be good and hot when you know it's all said and done kill any bacteria in it so that way you're not going to have an issue with it going rancid another thing you can do you can put it in plastic jugs and freeze it in your uh, freezer I probably would recommend putting it in a plastic bag uh, the jug the plastic jug and leaving about this much at the top of the jug so that way as it crystallizes as it turns to ice it's not going to bust the jug if it does it's in a, a trash bag so it's not going to get all over in the inside of your uh, freezer and you can thaw it out and use it as you will um, there is a good amount of material in here that's going to be need to be strained out and I would recommend straining all that stuff out before you reboil it and render it down the amount of uh, liquid I have in, in here now is much less than it was when I first started because it steamed you know for a very long time as everything was was boiling and steeping so there's a good bit less liquid in here now but what I would do I would go ahead and boil this and render this down to where it is either at least half the amount of liquid that's going to be left or down all the way to the fourth you have to keep an eye on it because if you let it go too far you're going to burn the um, melt the uh, solder out of your wash basin and you're, you're, you're going to have a worthless uh, piece of equipment you have to get it re-soldered in order to use it again but there we have it uh, I'm going to be wearing this the next time I go out so you're going to see this in an upcoming video the next time I, I hit the woods I'll take this out so you can see how it turned out when it's completely dry uh, I want to get this done want to get it uh, posted and things like that so I'm not going to wait another eight hours or so by the time that uh, I'm able to to get back to it and um, you'll, you'll see it then Folks, if you like today's episode, I'd like to appreciate a thumbs up. If you like what's going on on the channel, I'd truly appreciate you considering subscribing. And if you're subscribing, go ahead and hit that notifications bell. That way you can stay up to date on all the videos I've got going on. Also, if you think anyone could use this information, please share it. I know there's probably a lot of veterans out there that have a whole bunch of ACU uniforms. They're kicking around, they use them for work duds, whatever, working on the vehicles, things like that, because they aren't really good camouflage for much of anything else. Doing something like this, for my neck of the woods, southeastern Ohio, I'd say anywhere in the Midwest, this right here would do beautifully in any fall forest, all the way up into winter. So share these videos. If someone can use this information, the more that know it, the better. And lastly, comment if you have any comments you have any personal experiences doing walnut dyeing or things like that i'd love to hear about it really I, the comments are my favorite part of this whole youtube thing i really appreciate all of you that do comment i really enjoy reading them so that's it folks thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time